Hi, let's talk about short ribs. Or really, let's just talk about braising because it doesn't matter if it's short ribs or chuck roasts or whatever you're trying to braise. It's all kind of the same. Specifically today, we're doing a kind of red wine braise short rib. And for me, this is one of the easiest techniques to learn that seems hard when you don't know it. But anyway, uh, let's just jump right into it. So I'm gonna be using some boneless short ribs today. They're a little bit harder to find than bone-in short ribs, but their methodology is exactly the same and these are only choice short ribs but they look super impressive and only cost $11 a pound. Step one is just going to be salting your meat. You want to be kind of generous with the salt here. It's not going to make your food overly salty. You just want to make sure that these get seasoned up properly and they're going to be sitting in a pool of liquid for a few hours so really don't worry about over salting. Just make sure not to under salt. Once nicely salted we want to make sure to let these sit on the counter for at least 10 or 15 minutes. You could also let them sit in the fridge overnight which has its benefits but if you're like me and decided to do this at the last minute it, the counter is going to be fine. Instead of just staring at our meat while it salts, let's go ahead and get all our knife work out of the way. I'm just chopping up a couple onions here. These are going to get blended at some point, so don't worry too much about perfect cuts. And then we're going to do the same thing with garlic. Just, you know, give it a rough chop. Now that our meat is nice and salted, we'll give it a little bit of oil and just put those short ribs straight into the pan while it's nice and hot. And we're going to sear it off on all sides. Technically, this part's not 100% required like you could do without searing the meat, but it is going to give it more flavor, a depth of flavor, a little bit of a textural component. So unless you're in a huge rush for time, I wouldn't skip it, but it is possible. Once seared off, we're gonna set those aside and start working on our sauce. We're gonna throw in all of our onions with a little salt and just start cooking them down until they're nice and caramelized. Just like browning the meat, caramelizing the vegetables is gonna add a lot of depth of flavor to our sauce. And because the garlic takes a lot less time to cook than the onions, we're gonna throw those in once the onions are almost completely cooked and just cook for a few minutes. Now we're gonna need some wine to deglaze our pan. This is an important step in getting a super flavorful sauce because we have all of this fond or burnt stuff at the bottom of the pan and when we add all of that wine in it's going to help loosen that up absorb into the sauce and give us more layers of flavor unfortunately the wine doesn't do everything for us we kind of have to scrape away at the bottom of the pan having a flat wooden spoon like this is super helpful and we're just going to keep scraping everything until all of that is lifted off the bottom of the pan and absorbed into the sauce at which point we can add a whole bunch of beef stock and any aromatics you want like a whole bunch of thyme i'm going to finish off my sauce with some fresh freshly cracked pepper, adjust the salt if needed, and then go ahead and blend it. I like to blend the sauce now, and I actually recommend doing it in a high power blender rather than this hand blender, because by the time the meat's done cooking, I want only the solids in the sauce to be the meat. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and throw the meat into said sauce. The sauce should come at least three fourths of the way up the meat, if not completely submerge the meat in the sauce, and then we're just gonna cover it and throw it in the oven. So the cook time on this is gonna vary depending on a couple of different things, one of which is the cut of meat, the other one is the temperature of the oven. So we could give you some ballparks like three hours at 350 or four hours at 275 which is about what I did and you could check your meat at that time and it might not be fully tender in which case we're just gonna have to have a little patience and let it cook a little longer maybe 15 20 30 minutes we check it again it's not fully tender and we let it go another 15 20 30 minutes to me this is important to just learning how to cook and follow the signs of what's going on and not just following a recipe or a formula because sometimes it's gonna be different when you get into the science of what makes turning these tougher cuts of meat into super tender fall apart meat, but essentially it has to be in a certain range of temperatures for an extended period of time. And sometimes it just takes more time than others. So we just have to look for different things and follow our intuitions. And if it worked for me in four hours and it's not tender for you in four hours, I'm not wrong, you're not wrong, it's just a little bit different every time. So after our non-exact amount of time, this is kind of what we're looking for. We'll take it out of the oven, take off the lid, and then we're looking for some squishiness and tenderness to the meat without it totally falling apart. We still want some texture to the meat, but when we try to pull it apart, it should just pull apart super easily. We shouldn't have to work too hard for this to happen. At this point, we can take the meat out of the sauce, which should be very easy because we pre-blended the sauce, but we can actually do something with that sauce so that it's not just wasted. You could just strain out any solids that still exist in the sauce or throw it into a high-powered blender. Had you done this earlier, you might not need to blend it again, but we're just gonna blend it to get it super smooth and then throw it in a pan and let it start reducing. Now, depending on what you wanna do with your sauce, you could really let this reduce until it's super nice and thick, and I probably could've let mine go a little bit longer, but either way, the way that I like to finish my sauce is to add a little bit of cold butter off heat and mix that until it's fully emulsified into the sauce. This just adds to the the overall shininess and creaminess of the sauce and gives it a little bit more flavor. Now we can just pour that all over our meat and you're pretty much done. It should be tender enough to eat with a spoon. Look at that, it just falls apart. It's important to know 
out. It's not falling apart and mushy. It still has texture. Yeah, that's super good. Mm. I know I didn't really plate anything up. Maybe I'll just show you a, a dish that I made on a short form or maybe a sandwich I made in a different short form video. But either way, braising is super easy. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, I don't care. But either way, I hope you eat some good food today. Bye.